These college students are taking a week out of their summer vacation for one very important reason, to train as foot soldiers in the nation's war over abortion. With a conservative majority on the Supreme Court and abortion bans sweeping across the states, the anti-abortion movement needs a good ground game. Welcome to Pro-Life Boot Camp. So this week we are doing a training session for the newbies at the uh, Dr. Joseph Graham Fellowship for College Pro-Life Leaders um, with the Texas Right to Life. Welcome. <laughs> We're doing a week-long training to become better pro-life activists and learn how to better talk about and communicate these pro-life issues to the community. You're good to go. Hi, Hi Jordan. Jordan. I guess a big part of it is getting to know other pro-life leaders in Texas and getting to witness what they struggle with and learn from what they deal with on their campuses um, and bring it back to my own. Hi, Veronica Arnold Smither. Thank you all so much for coming. Text Right to Life was founded in 1972, which was the year before Roe v. Wade passed. So Dr. Joseph Graham founded Texas Right to Life. He was a professor at the University of St. Thomas and uh, a student, just like y'all, went up to him and said, hey, I think we should do something about this pro-life issue. It's really important. This is a scholarship program for undergraduate students and they have to apply and if they're selected, they come to their first week of training, which is what y'all are witnessing right now. How many students apply every year? Well, it's increasing every year. This year we had about 65 apply. And you and choose? We were able to select 49. And you said they get scholarships? They do. They earn $1,000 per semester. I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist, and I've performed over 1,200 abortions. First, I'm, going to describe I'm doing the math in my head. 49 students, mm -hmm. $1,000 a semester, <laughs> $2,000 a year, yep. right? So that's Plus roughly, training and expenses. That's $100,000 for one class, right? And just in scholarships. Mm -hmm. And then we're, you know, we're in a four-star hotel I know. right now. This is th this is unusual for us. It's yeah. really nice to be here. Who is paying for all of this? We have a lot of really generous donors. We also have a ton of donors who just give a little bit what they can, you know? Texas Right to Life does more than just train college students. Its political action committee raised $3.1 million in the 2018 elections. More than half of that money came from the Wilkes brothers, Texas oil and gas billionaires who have been called the Koch brothers of the Christian right. The program, like this fellowship, where does it fit in the overall strategy of Texas Right to Life? We're helping train the generation that already believes in this cause but may feel like they not have the tools to, to help and so we're giving them the tools to help. This is a sofa claim. The abortionist uses this claim to grasp an arm or leg. Once he has a firm grip, the abortionist pulls hard in order to tear the limb from the baby's body. One by one. This video isn't completely accurate. It exaggerates a bit, like the risk of abortion or how certain procedures look. But it's effective because it's graphic and disturbing. It sounds like you put a lot of emphasis on this fellowship, like it's very important. Why is it necessary? Why is this fellowship even needed? Hmm. Well, we are trying to save the world, so bingo. I want you to know today, no matter where you're at or what you've done, you can change. Make a decision today to protect the pre -born. Science tells us that uh, life actually begins at conception when the egg and sperm meet. Mm -hmm. um, and so that unborn child um, is actually a life. So, so right now, the students are practicing tabling, a process in which you set up a table on campus to talk about abortion. There are five essential rules to tabling. Number one, have to have a topic that serves as a departure point for the conversation. Number two, stand in front of the table and don't sit. Always have a female present because are optics are important. Keep the conversation going by asking questions. And last but not least, have a sign-up sheet. If I had a friend like you do, you know, I'd want, if I wasn't, I don't, know, I don't know how to word it. You know what I'm trying to say? 
Yes, ma'am. Come on in, Roland, quickly. Yes. So, you're doing a great job. Um, don't forget to ask questions. Yep. So, she said, I personally don't believe yeah. life begins at conception. Yes. yes. You had a really good opportunity for a question there. When do you think it begins? Yeah, what's your opinion? When do you think it begins? Like, you want to know. I just want to give it to her, though. I know. It's a baby. I know, I know, I know. Ask a follow-up question, because sometimes people just honestly have not thought out their opinion. Has there ever been a time where you've been tabling and someone make such a strong point for pro-choice that you're like, hmm, <laughs> I may think about converting? Oh yeah, there have definitely been times when like pro-choice people will make an argument that I've never heard before that's like really, really logically sound and I'm just kind of like, man, you put me in a pickle here. Mm. It happens, you know? Um, but the best way to respond to that is always to just go, you know what, you know? Maybe you've made some good points here, and you know, I definitely see where you're coming from, but I still can't agree with your basic prepositions. If that but, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's always a but. Uh, yeah. Does it alarm more than the snooze? Does anyone have like a good <laughs> natural <laughs> alarm clock? Like, natural alarm? I usually wake up like, oh, yeah. like I you like my alarm. Yeah, I wake up at <laughs> it's really bad every day. Every day. Uh, well, like, I just like <laughs> turn off my alarm. Right? Oh, yeah. I thought, I thought I'm you like wake up like. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Y'all, y'all dress nicely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, I clean up all right. Good morning. You guys excited about today? Yeah. During our newbie training, we take people for a tour of the local Holocaust Museum. Uh, the Holocaust Museum is undergoing renovations right now, but the reason we do this is because I think it's important for people to see uh, past genocides, uh, and not that we can say that the, Holoc the Nazi Holocaust was the same as the abortion Holocaust at all, but I do think it's important that we draw from history so uh, instead of going to the Holocaust Museum today, we're going to watch a couple of films about it, and then we'll have some discussions. In July 1941, Hermann Goering, Hitler's second in command, authorized all necessary preparations for the final solution of the Jewish question. In several killing facilities exclusively designed to kill human beings on an industrial scale, camp authorities used poison gas to murder children, women, and men. That's heavy. For what purpose do you have them watch Holocaust films? When we imagine the such a tragic time as, as Nazi Germany and what they were going through, um, we often ask ourselves, where was the world? And uh, it took a while for the world to catch up and to do something about it. A lot of students will understand the same line of thinking on where was the world? And now it's, it's my turn to take action. To future generations, it must be told in the 20th century, there existed a civilization which for 12 years returned to barbarism. It could be a slippery slope to compare the two, though, don't you think? Like, even though you say they're not the same, in a space like this, people are connecting them, right? Some people would look at that and be like, that is egregious that you would compare the Holocaust to abortion because well, there's so many I would think if we were claiming that they were exactly the same, then that well, would not be exactly. wrong. Yeah, but right. we're claiming that there is a slippery slope in people's mentality. And what's going on today is quite different. They were discriminating against Jews and so many countless other types of people that they saw as unfit. And uh, today in the United States and across the world, we're discriminating against an entire group of people, the unborn. <laughs> So we watched a couple clips. The first one was um, a clip about the Holocaust, and then just going further and thinking, 
how if you're against the killing of life or even potential life in a situation like Nazi Germany, can you still support the ending of life or potential life in a mother's womb? Ooh, Shiva. I don't know, that sounds like a little stretch, don't you think? I mean, if you start off with just, hey, do you think the Holocaust and abortion are the same? Most people are gonna be immediately thrown off and think, why are you trying to compare those two? Do you think they're the same? They are not the same. They're two very, very different scenarios, but they have similarities. One of the main similarities is the dehumanization of people. They were referenced as Jews rather than people. Now, in modern day, what do you refer to as an, unborn, an unborn baby as? It's usually either an embryo or a fetus, right? Okay. But both of those in their respective origin, either in Greek or Latin, they both mean child. And so by dehumanizing it, by calling them something that people can't really relate to as much on a personal con kind of connection, then you don't make the act seem as bad as it is. Within this fellowship, is it that you guys are getting trained to argue and debate, or is it based in the idea of critically thinking about both sides of an issue? I think that might be a better question for um, Veronica. Oh, okay. The fellowship is largely based on people who have already um, have done the critical thinking side of it, and then they're wanting to know how to communicate that. Um, but also, we're, I think, planning to leave here at one-ish, which is now, oh. so I want to make sure you guys have Oh, yeah. Right, yeah eat, up. eat up. Throughout the week, our access came with a handler. Kim stood on the sidelines of almost every interview, often with a voice recorder in hand. In this program, are you teaching them to think critically, or are you training them to defeat the other side? Ooh, a good question. Well, I would say that we are challenging people's views. We, we are teaching them dialogue and critical thinking, but for the purpose of helping a person. This isn't like conversion camp. Like, everybody here is already pro-life. They care about this deeply. And now they may feel like they need to learn about other tools. Let's have a five minute break and then keep going. Stretch your legs, run around the block. How are you this morning? I am well. I am the executive director of Rehumanize International. And the title of my talk is uh, Embracing the F Word, Learning to Love Pro-Life Feminism. Because, you know, in feminist circles, the word pro-life is seen as this, you know, like this cuss word that you can't really say. Because if you're a true feminist, it's presumed that you have to support the legal right to abortion. The core principles of feminism are equality, non-discrimination, and non-violence. Regardless of our age, or gender, or race, or religion, or nationality, or sexual orientation, we all deserve to live free from violence. Any sort of feminism that supports abortion actually reinforces structures of inequality, discrimination, and violence. My question is actually whether you can authentically be pro-choice and feminist. It is submitting to the structure of the patriarchy to perpetuate the idea that mothers are inherently disempowered, that mothers cannot achieve their dreams and their goals without their right to kill their children. The pro-life movement seems to tell people through legislation in every circumstance, if you become pregnant, you have to have the baby. So is that not counter to what feminism is all about? So our proposition as pro-lifers is not to say that we want to remove, um, you know, nonviolent choices, but rather that abortion should be included along with domestic violence, along with um, rape, along with homicide as an offense that should not be allowed by law. I think there's also this, this idea that within the pro-life movement, there's an inherent hypocrisy in that you guys are more pro-birth 
then you are pro-life. What about overhauling the foster care system? You know, what about Medicaid? Why put so much emphasis on this fight and not when the baby is born? It's a fair question because it needs to be human rights for all human beings. But I also understand the necessity that a lot of, you know, mainstream pro-life advocates have, and that is because abortion takes on average, you know, somewhere above 2,500 lives every day in the United States. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. I ask, Lord, that you be with us throughout this whole day, God, and that uh, your mercy and spirit rest with us when we go to Planned Parenthood as we uh, use compassion to maybe help and deter people away. Amen. Amen. We want to obviously like stay within the law. Um, we're here peacefully and legally praying. So um, don't block the sidewalk. Stay like in a single file line along the sidewalk. Cool. Stand and say, I am a child of God. We're at the Planned Parenthood in Houston, and we're praying and just staying in solidarity with the women who are going in there and trying to show support um, so that they don't feel like they have to go through an abortion. This is the make or break situation. They're either going to go through this or not. Um, and so if we can be there to encourage them in any way to not go through it, I think it's super important. This is some level of commitment in this <laughs> rain, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a life or death situation in this case, so I take it pretty seriously. So this is my first time here and at any abortion facility. And being in your first time, mm -hmm. how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling okay. Um, it's not as scary as I thought it would be. Um, and I'm just doing what I can. So um, I feel just good that I'm doing what I can by uh, being a peaceful presence here and participating with the other, um, the other fellows. The pro-life movement is rethinking its approach to protesting abortion clinics. No more signs with pictures of fetuses. No calling women baby killers. Now it's all prayers and soft-spoken attempts to intercept the women who enter. They're right. Like, you don't ever know somebody's situation. I was raped in my backyard last night. Why don't y'all protest that type of shit? And Planned Parenthood is the only place that I know that I can come and get checked. Right, we're not here to judge people. You know, we want to let you know that if you're suffering uh, some kind of atrocity, if you're in a bad situation with maybe your significant other or your family, there are people who can help. Look. When God gives you instruction, all you can do is What do you guys make of all of the abortion bans that are being passed into law right now? Are you guys in favor of these? So certainly uh, the new legislation helps our cause, um, but ultimately my um, mission is not to necessarily make abortion illegal, but to make it unthinkable and to make a culture that doesn't stigmatize women for being pregnant and doesn't treat pregnancy as a disease. Mm -hmm. Any legislation that helps save lives, ultimately, I'm in favor of, but I agree that I think that it's not just the legislation that's important, it's about changing hearts. And the culture. And the culture, exactly. Are you all in favor of making abortion illegal? Of course. I can see yeah. um, a possibility where towards the end of our lifetime, or by the end of our lifetime, abortion yeah. is illegal. Um, and, but I think first we need to change hearts before yeah. um, we can um, change anything else. What should be the ramifications for someone who goes through with an abortion if it's illegal? That's more of a question for the uh, legislative team. In, our, um, in all of the bills that we write, the woman is never, ever, ever punished um, mm -hmm. for having an abortion. Uh, the abortionist himself 
is the one who incurs a fine and civil uh, penalties. Yeah, I would decline to answer that because I, I don't think anyone's going to perceive yeah. our answer in a, in a well manner. Mm -hmm. And I also, like, I'm still learning how to state my own thoughts. I don't really want to say something that I don't feel fully confident Because it was in the news in, in Texas mm -hmm. um, during the legislative period, which caused a lot of controversy. Students will get a crash course in legislation and lobbying in their second year of training. Texas Right to Life also sends six full-time lobbyists to the Capitol in Austin. They've championed laws that have closed half of the abortion clinics in Texas. Right now, is there a lot of momentum in the pro-life movement? I think right now it's a really exciting time to be pro-life just because I feel like a lot of minds are changing with what's happening in the country. And so it's it's going to be exciting just in the next couple um, years, especially with like the new um, federal judges um, to see if like anything's going to happen. But uh, yeah, I don't really know how <laughs> all that legal stuff works. And it's, it's exciting because there's an even bigger call for us to be active. With all the, the, the abortion bans and such, we were called as a lifers to step up and be there because now women will, you know, they'll be having more babies, which is great. And we want to be there and be able to meet their, their needs. So we really have to step up the game. How's everybody? Did you get actual sleep last night? Anybody? Three hours? Great. So if you flip your binder, it should be fellowship requirements. There's a Texas Right to Life copy and there's a student copy. You're going to sign one and then you're going to sign the other, the Texas Right to Life copy, and give it back to us. So that's way you always, that way you always know what is expected of you. So. As fellows, you yourselves are now affiliated with us. Um, and so we want to make sure that whenever you are speaking publicly, that anything you're saying or doing is um, upholding Texas Right to Life's values and mission. So as an example, we know a lot of young people really love Bernie Sanders. A lot of young people really love Beto. Um, and that's totally your prerogative if you vote for them. But publicly, we just ask that you uphold our mission and our values. Does that make sense? OK. Any questions about that? Cool? Great. Next. I think it's the beginning of everything. I think it's brought to light a lot of issues on my own campus that I'm willing to stand up for now. And I'm a little more comfortable standing up for now. I feel like I'm leaving with a whole new family and I'm leaving with all this excitement to go back to my campus and present everything that I've learned. I'm so glad that I was able to be here this week. This week has sparked um, kind of a fire inside of me to um, keep doing what I'm doing and that what I'm doing matters. It's all about just like keeping the focus and keeping motivated and like believing in my heart that what I'm doing is right and that I want to be on the right side of history. And ready, one, two, 